Chris, uh, I'm far away from you, but welcome to Boiling Springs. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. It's been a cool journey so far. Well, and let's talk about that journey because you make a really good point. You're a guy from the north and you kind of, as Hank Stram would say, matriculated to the south. You want to take us through that Ohio-North Carolina connection? Yeah. So I grew up in Ohio, lived there the bulk of my life and professionally, personally, um, my wife and I, we, we went to Elon 13 and 16 and uh, and worked there. So we had our first taste in North Carolina then. My son, Hawkins, who's eight now, was born in Greensboro. And so so it was always kind of a kind of a special place for us. And we always knew when we left Elon that we ever had a chance to maybe come back to this state. Um, we were going to take advantage of the opportunity and and uh, and the good Lord put this one in front of us. And so here we are. So talk me through those uh, days in late November and December before you accepted the job. Yeah, it was it was a it was a roller coaster for sure. Um, but it was really a quick process. You know, it was after our season, thankfully. And so we were able to really can kind of compartmentalize upon this. And um, I loved where I worked. I loved Tiffin. We had built a really cool program and uh, and I appreciated the people I worked for and with. And I loved our players. And so by no means was it an easy decision. But when we were able to get down here and visit with with the president, uh, Dr. Downs, visit with Dr. Goodwin, our athletic director, um, see the infrastructure and the support that Gardner Webb has, it, it became an easier decision, you know, and, and, uh, and so it was fast. We, you know, we had uh, kind of finalized everything. And about 15 minutes later, we were meeting with our team at Tiffin and about 15 minutes after that meet with the parents and, um, and try to do it the right way as well as we could. And, uh, but it was certainly a whirlwind. Yeah. I got only an opportunity to ask this to three new coaches. So I always like this question, maybe sometimes a little bit overrated, but I'm going to de describe Chris Reichert's style. Everybody likes to talk about that. What kind of style will you be bringing to uh, Bowling Springs uh, as the head coach? Sure. Um, I don't know if it's style. I, I think, you know, who I am, I, I like to think that I'm intentional. I, I like to think that we're thoughtful about everything that we do. Um, we choose to respond to things that we face rather than emotionally react to them. I think that there's a, a plan for everything that we choose to, to embark upon. I like to think that we're consistent, you know, uh, myself included, that you know, you're going to get the same program, just like you're going to get the same person every single day, you know, whether it's a good day, a bad day. Um, it's still going to be about relationships. It's still going to be about handling our business the best possible way. And, and then the last thing I'd say is I, I think you're going to get a, a group that's passionate. You know, I love football. I am, the luckiest guy in the world that I get to coach football and they pay me money to like, to do this, you know, and, and, and I, I never, I never, uh, I never overlooked that, you know? And so just the chance to, to play a kid's game, to be around some amazing coaches, some amazing players and to get to um, uh, glorify God by doing this. Like, I just think it's the coolest thing of all time. And so uh, you're going to get consistency. You're going to get intentionality and you're going to get a whole bunch of passion. And you're going to get a lot of new players, 46 yeah. in the signing class. Yeah. How do you uh, address that a little bit? That That's uh, that's quite a turnover. Yeah, it was. No, 46 in the signing class, and that wasn't the end. It was still added. We've added roughly another 30, um, you know, even since then. And so uh, we've, we've brought in close to 70, 75 guys and, and to, to be able to round out the roster. And um, and it, that's that's been, you know, really the, the biggest part of our of our journey has been the, the acquiring of talent, the, the developing and, and really instilling a culture and getting all those new faces and names and backgrounds and cultures and journeys and getting them to kind of meld into one football team. And so that has been uh, a bear, but it's been also a really cool journey because we've been able to recruit guys that fully understand what they're walking into, you know, versus inheriting a team that maybe there's slight differences to the culture that we have versus the previous regime, not better or worse, just different. And those previous guys maybe didn't opt into that. Right. And so for us, it was like, Hey, this is who we are. This is what we do. These are the things that you're going to hear from us every single day. This is the opportunity and do you want it or not? And um, so it's been very transparent, which I love. Do you have a lot of uh, names on the back of the uh, helmets on on tape to recognize folks? Did you bring a roster out numerically? Yeah. How, how you know, did, what did that look like? I've um, I've, I've had a lot of experience with big rosters and transition. You know, Division two level, it's that's mm -hmm. kind of the norm. You know, I, I mean, shoot, in in twenty two, we had one hundred ninety players, and um, and so 
you got to remember all those guys' names. So what I do is, and I, and I learned this way back when, I have a coach that I have a Facebook, right? So I have um, a Google Sheet, and it's by position and all the guys' faces, where they're from, uh, what year they are, and then, like, one unique thing that I acquire or learn about them. And that way, as a head coach, it's like, you know, you have limited interactions with everybody. At least you wish you had more. And so if my interactions with each guy on our team are a little bit more pointed and a little bit more intentional and thoughtful and they mean something, it's going to help build our culture a little bit stronger. And you mentioned learning and learning them. What was your evaluation process with that large of a class? Well, um, you try and be incredibly inquisitive. You know, uh, we we are curious by nature as a staff. Um, if it doesn't look right, it's probably not right. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. And, and I, I've gotten really adept, I think, at just trusting my instincts and my guts. And we've had to we recruited so many guys at Tiff and you're making snap decisions and you're learning about them very quickly. And then I think it's, it's doing the, the work, you know, we don't take transfers without calling the previous staff, right? Like, Hey, I know you, I know this kid's leaving, but can you tell me about him? You know, and, and you learn a lot about a guy from the coach that used to have him, even though he's leaving. And um, we don't take guys without conversations like that. And we're rare probably in that because a lot of times those are awkward conversations, but um those are ones that that save us from bringing in bad eggs. I think oftentimes it's the ones you don't get, the ones you don't bring in that are more important than the ones that you do bring in. And so we've tried to be super cautious about building a team with high character humans that happen to be good football players. Your quarterback and your defensive lineman, Aiden Bell, and your quarterback, Hefley, are going to be joining or joining actually in another room. Uh, yeah. Looking for a word or two on those two because, obviously, you know, anchoring that defensive line would appear to me with your background to be something you want to uh, get a foothold on early on yeah. and, uh, at, at the quarterback as well. Yeah, so for Ren, I would, I would say meticulous. Um, that, that would be – if you if I had to give you one word, I think that he's – incredibly detailed there is there's no stone unturned you talk about a guy that wants to be great like never been around anybody like it you know and so um and it's not when you're looking it's when you're not looking you know and it's just mm -hmm. it's it's daily um with Aiden I would say um intense you know there there's an energy to him where uh he's a standard bearer you know he's going to hold the standard he's going to hold others accountable to that standard He's not afraid to call guys out in the right way. Um, he's not afraid to uphold the things that we believe and that we care about. And he's a culture driver, you know. And so I think that intensity is one that we really need, um, certainly as a program. You can't have a bunch of crazy people running around. But when you have intensity at certain spots and guys that understand the nuance behind that, uh, it makes a great difference. And even the media guy would agree with you. You want that as a defensive lineman. And, and, and that's the spot. Well. No, I mean, if you can pick a position, you probably yeah. – not a whole lot of laissez-faire in defensive line. No, not at all. No government interference. That's <laughs> for sure. Hey, I wanted to uh, talk about the schedule uh, yeah. as we kind of wrap up there. Uh, frankly, that's probably a lot of teams on that schedule that you're, you and your staff are probably not familiar with. How do you go about that? Yeah, you try and learn as much as you can throughout the summer. You know, we're watching all kinds of tape and just kind of getting a rough chop idea on different teams and what they do structurally. And, you know, this day and age in college football, it's like there's so much transition, whether it's coaches, whether it's players. I mean, I got no idea, you know, what, what Wofford's going to look like personnel-wise. You don't know what transferred in, what transferred out. You can Google and Twitter and research as much as you can, you know, until the nth degree, but there's always things that are outside of your purview. And so – for us, it's it's if there is a consistent structure that we can take away from it, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, we kind of put that in the memory bank and prepare for that throughout the summer. And but there's going to be some learning curves of us trying to really learn the nuance of what teams do and how they do it. And so much of it, you know, structure is one thing, but intent is another thing. And the personality of play callers, the personality of coaches, you know, who are the aggressive guys who goes for it on fourth down, who are the guys that love trick plays late in the third quarter, like you know, some of that stuff that it'll take us a year or two to to really get to go through those experiences and learn those things. But we try and be meticulous and curious as we're watching tape and to make sure we keep those things in the memory bank and in our database and that we're, we're prepared. 
Are you thinking ahead to to game one and and what that's going to be like? You mentioned Wofford. You have them at home. And then I might mention uh, two really tough road games, yeah. going to James Madison and then uh, playing Coach Biff in uh, Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, have you thought about what that first three weeks is going to look like before you get into conference play? Yeah, I, I'm so excited. Like, I'm anxious, just like everybody else is anxious to learn about our team. You know, this has been such a long time coming where – I, I I like what we've done. I'm so excited about what we've done. I'm I'm confident. I'm optimistic about what we've done. But at some point, the proof's in the pudding, right? And and just the opportunity to compete, you know, and figure out, man, we got a long way to go. Or all right, we're okay. Let's keep let's keep Kaizen and let's keep continuously improving and getting better and um and finding a way to evolve and be the best version of us by the end of the year. So uh, I can't wait. I, I know we have Wofford's a great program and one that um that we're going to have our hands full in every sense of the way. And it's no different at JMU, no different at Charlotte. Uh, you know, it's the nature of the beast. And so it's college football and you want to compete against the best in order to figure out where you stack up. And so we see it as a blessing and let's go put the ball down and see what happens. And with that, I just kind of want to choose a final question. Take us where your team is from right now until first game, What's your schedule like, and and uh, when do uh, all the student athletes arrive on campus if they're not there already? Kind of take us through that and your first yeah. class coming through. Yeah, the bulk of the guys are. I've been here uh, for for the majority of the summer. They'll they'll uh, they'll have their last training session next Monday, and then they'll get about a week off before we report to camp. And then uh, July twenty eighth, we come to camp. First practice July 29th, and we're full steam ahead. And so. Um, you know, typically camp is, is football heaven, I call it, where it's kind of all day ball, you know, and uh, as a coach, you love it. As a player, you mostly love it, but sometimes like, man, can we do something else. And so we try and break up, you know, the, the rigmarole, of, you know, do some different team building stuff and keep it light and keep it fun. But um, it's a tremendous opportunity for us to sharpen the sword um, and, and earn the opportunity to play well whether it's week one or beyond, uh, that's really what camp is, what the summer is. you got to earn that, and that doesn't happen by accident. Love your enthusiasm. Best of luck to you, Coach. Great to meet you, uh, and we'll for sure see you along the way. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. All righty.